Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here with Jamie from MoTeC at World Time Attack. Now I wanted to talk to Jamie about some of MoTeC's new products, but first of all the MoTeC brand, Jamie, it's, it's nothing new. You guys are in V8 supercars, you're all over the world, you're clearly one of the uh, premier brands. Give me a little bit about uh, where MoTeC's come from, what, are, what were your old systems and, and where have you moved to now? Uh, the MoTeC system originally started just as a garage in Bayswater. The first ECUs were screwdriver adjustable and sadly we still get some of them today. So we get a guy ring up and go, I'm just trying to adjust the fuel and we say, oh what software are you using? He goes, oh no I get this screwdriver out and I just have to adjust this little pot and you're going, oh man, I don't know how you're going to do that, I've never even seen one of them. So yeah, we've had screwdriver through to hand controller and now we're into you know software with Windows 8 and Ethernet and all that, so, so it's a big change from the early days. I mean, I started with my own drag car back 10 years ago using a uh, MoTeC M48, uh, running my Evo. It was a great ECU. It did everything I wanted. We moved on to the uh, the 100 series. We had an M800 in it, and uh, that's one of your really popular ECUs. They're in use all around the world, and a, a really sophisticated ECU. One of the products I wanted to ask you about here, though, is your new Magnesium series. Now, I went to PRI a number of years ago, and uh, MoTeC were heralding the release of this new Magnesium series, and it was all singing and all dancing. The spec list was amazing, and uh, it just never quite came out. Slowly over the last 12 months, we've started seeing these new Magnesium Series ECUs come out. So first of all, can you tell us what was the delay, where, where, where was the problem in getting these out to market? I think we just mainly underestimated the work involved in the job. It's a complete different business model. We're no longer just selling an ECU that everybody buys and does their own thing with. We're having to write specialist code for individual cars. The reason for the M1 to actually exist in the first place is that modern cars can't just be modified using an ECU that everybody can use. The reason for that is there's too many inputs, too many outputs, too much CAN bus control, too many modules you have to control. You can't just grab an ECU like our old M800 and plug it into a current uh, BMW or Mercedes because the car won't even start. So what we did is we've designed an ECU for the future, an ECU that can be customised to an individual car we can write special CAN messages. The messages will keep the um, body control module going. It'll tell the security system that it's okay to start the car. It'll tell the transmission to work. It'll tell the torque control system it's okay. It'll tell the ABS to keep going. And the model of business to actually make all that stuff work was so tough from a business that's used to just selling an ECU with a firmware that runs everything. And trying to make everybody be able to understand this new model is taking some time. It's still taking time now because we've released the R35 ECU, and the R35 ECU had to do so much integration with the car that it took us a long time to do. So it's become an expensive product to produce, but of course the end product is something that not many people are able to do. Okay, so the, the Magnesium series, the M150 for example, that, that's not strictly an ECU that you would recommend for, say, your race car where it's a stripped out car, you've got a, a common engine, maybe a Toyota 2J, and none of the complexities, no, no uh, ECU control gearboxes, so the Magnesium Series wouldn't be an option for that or something you'd recommend? Well the M800 can certainly run those cars, and there's no problems to do that. But the M1 series is made for more advanced things. The general plan is we're going to make it so the M1 can run those particular engines and will be able to run those cars. But the, we've had to put in place the facility for us to do the more complex cars as well. One of the cars we keep getting asked is the latest Lamborghini Gallardo because it's a DI engine and people want to race these DI engine cars. So at the moment there's no ECUs you can buy to do it. But our new Magnesium ECU, which can do direct injection, can actually run that car in its entirety. So it gives us the ability to do the older ones, but also the ability to move forward with the newer cars that nobody else is in a position to do with their current hardware platforms. That, that makes a lot of sense, I understand that, and I can see, particularly if we look at Le Mans prototypes racing, the direct injection is, it seems to be the way of the future and the way a lot of engines will go. From a tuning perspective, if we're tuning a direct injection engine uh, compared to a port injection engine, what sort of differences is the tuner going to have to look at? 
Well, the main things you've got to try and keep in mind is at the end of the day, you still have to get the right amount of fuel in. But it's a much harder model to deal with. You have to worry about cylinder pressure versus fuel pressure and keep the right relationship between cylinder pressure and fuel pressure so your injector opening times get the right amount of fuel in, the precise amount of fuel in to get the right air fuel ratio. So it's actually more about pump control than it ever used to be. It used to be you turned your fuel pump on and that's the last you know about it. Now you have to electrically control the fuel pump to control the pressure so that you can keep the right relationship. So the tuner's job, in the end the tuner shouldn't need to worry about how to deal with the fuel pump. That's where the M1 comes in. We will pre-program the fuel pump so the pump has the right work for it. So it'll actually start up, it'll give the right amount of fuel pressure and the tuner then just has to tune the fuel map like he's used to doing. So. The problem is we can't make dealers have to learn about some of the really technical difficulties that make DI engines almost impossible for a normal tuner to do. So we've used the M1 to take that complexity, let us do the work to make that complexity happen, and then we'll give you the same sort of interface that you're used to to tune the car. So in essence, you're dumbing it down for the tuner. So the tuner is used to tuning a normal engine with fuel and ignition timing. Basically, that's the same thing they need to worry about with DI. It absolutely has to be that way. We can't expect people who are used to tuning cars to start being experts in DI fuel pumps and experts in all these things. You won't be able to sell the DI ECUs if you expect the dealers to be able to backwards engineer a DI fuel pump. It's not possible. So that's part of this challenge of the model that I was talking to you about earlier. How do we deal with these difficult engines and we can't just let our dealers do them because they'll never be able to make these cars run. We could not give almost any of our dealers a current DI Gallardo and say there you go with an M800. They wouldn't be able to do the work and even if they did how much would they have to charge that one customer to build that one car. We need to take some of that work in house, amortise the cost of making that car run across quite a few sales and then have an ECU that will run the Gallardo that lots of people can purchase. That makes a lot of sense, I can understand that and I think probably us at the end user are going to get a better product for that, for your efforts. Okay, so the M150 or the Magnesium Series in general at the moment, we can't just buy a universal off-the-shelf Magnesium Series ECU to run any engine, can we? We've actually created a package that we're hoping to release on the November 1st, so very, very shortly, and that's going to allow more flexibility. So it'll allow people to choose a ref sync mode, choose a number of cylinders, and be able to run a range of cars. So we are actually producing a package specifically that's going to be that style of package, but people will often be choosing between that and an M800. They may find one's better or the other one's better, depending on what they want. So yes, that will be made available, but the other priority for it is for us to do specific cars and DI cars in particular, which is the place that nobody else is really doing much with at the moment. Okay, so you've got two packages available for the Magnesium series. You've got M1 Tune and you've got M1 Build. Can you just tell us a little bit about the differences between those two uh, pieces of software and what each of them do? No problems. Well, the M1 Tune software is our new engine management system software. So if you've used ECU Manager before from ours or any other ECU manager, Tune is that equivalent. It lets you look at all the parameters, the tables, and modify the values to run your engine. That's what your normal dealer who's installing an ECU in their car is going to be playing with. M1 Build is a whole new business model that's really exciting. It's the most exciting thing I've seen in engine management systems since I've started in it, which was, geez, too long ago, 20 years ago. So what it is, we're going to give you access to the code. So if you need to write a specific module to make your car run, we're going to let you drop back into the programming code, into a modularized system that'll let you make your own firmware up. You'll be able to grab DI modules, you'll be able to grab injector modules, you'll be able to grab knock modules or traction control modules. You place them into your code, then you can write your own specialist code to make it unique to your car. You can compile it, build it, and it'll build into a firmware that goes into your ECU. Your ECU can then be used with Tune to tune the car you can have your own system that nobody else in the world has. That sounds amazingly powerful. From a tuner's perspective, it also sounds quite scary. Is this opening you guys up for a, a hell of a lot of technical support trying to get people to get their ECUs to a point where they can even run an engine? The business model that we're looking at, what we're trying to do is make it so that people with the appropriate programming skills work hand in hand with a tuner who has the appropriate mechanical skills. So you've got a tuning shop and a guy's come in with a brand new BMW M5 V10 DI. So you've gone, all right, I reckon if I make an ECU to suit this car, I'll sell it all around the world. So you get, you hire in a programmer, you tell the programmer, make the, make the ECU do this. He writes the code for you. You then compile that code into your ECU, you run your BMW M5. Finally, you personally have a BMW M5 ECU that no one in the world has got. 
Motec don't own the code, you own the code. You can then go along, sell that BMW ECU you've just built to anyone in the world, and you may be the only one with an ECU that runs the BMW 5 anywhere in the world. There's your business model. You can sell hundreds a year around the world for this one car that you own all the code to. That's, that sounds like an interesting way of, of uh, producing new ECUs and uh, obviously there's a lot of potential there for big markets across the world and new cars. That, that software, that IP or firmware that uh, has been developed then, that, that stays the, uh, the rights of the tuner that's created it I, I believe? Absolutely. We never get to even see the code of the person who wrote it. That had to be part of the business model because there's no use making someone produce an ECU for an M5 and we take it all and sell it on your. It's not going to happen. You write your own code, we never see it. We sell you empty boxes, you put your special code in it, you put your own stickers on it, you put your own you put your own documentation with it, your own wiring loom and adapters and anything else you want, and you can sell it as a kit and Motec will just take the empty boxes and sell them to you. That's all we do. That sounds great and it sounds like there's going to be some really exciting things come out in the next few years. Another product that you were telling me about earlier was the new computer for the Toyota 86 and Scion FRS. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, we've just finished the um, BRZ Scion FT86 cars ECU. It's based on the M1 because we had to be able to run all four camshafts. We're running the DI injectors, running the port injectors, and it plugs straight in with an optional adapter loom. That adapter loom lets you run the body control module, the CAN bus for the dashboard, the fuel pumps, everything. We run the entire car, you just plug the car in, starts up like a road car and you can drive away and then you can start modifying. It's not quite like the flash tuners which have the ability to just go in and make small modifications. This is for guys that are going to do race cars and big modifications. It's going to have, it's got full traction control, launch control, anti-lag, all the sort of stuff you need when you're going to put supercharges and turbochargers on those cars. So the guys out there doing an air filter and a catback exhaust, that's not really the sort of product that they'd be interested in? No, look, I don't really think so. We have to be realistic about this. The flash tuners do a pretty good job and they're relatively inexpensive. This is still a $3,500 unit, so it's not going to compete with the flash tuners, and we knew that from the start. We decided we were going to do this because we think that for the people who want to modify the cars extensively, there's not enough flexibility in the flash tuners to actually do that. So we take the ECU out in its entirety and give you a wide open area to do anything you like. So our volumes are going to be lower than the flash tuners, absolutely. But for those people who want to do lots of stuff on the car, this is going to be the only option that's available at the moment for you to do that. Okay, that's cool. Look, um, with the uh, with the new issues that are coming out, obviously there's there's going to be a lot of exciting new features um, being released. You are obviously developing a lot of uh, plug and play models for cars. You've you've just told us about the FT86 BRZ ECU. I know you've also recently released a uh, plug in module for the R35 GDR. Cars are obviously getting more complex as the years go past. You guys have developed this new magnesium series with the technology to compete with that. When you're developing a plug and play in house for a new brand, what sort of engineering challenges or, or obstacles do you have to face? The biggest thing for us is always backwards engineering the CAN bus. The car companies refuse utterly to tell us how the CAN bus works and everybody's in the same boat. So we have to sit there with a car downstairs in the workshop and go put a can analyzer on and go righto, what are the channels doing? And we sit there and move stuff on the car, work out what it's doing and write okay this particular bit on the CAN bus is for this purpose. We work our way through that and then we can make the ECU do all those functions instead of the factory ECU. That's the biggest job. Once you've done that, often it's just a car. So you just run the engine, send the stuff to the transmission and all that sort of stuff. So it's a much easier job, but the CAN bus is the single biggest problem for everybody. Well you've obviously got the technology there to do, it, do the job and do it very well. Um, I'm certainly really excited to get my hands on one of the Magnesium Series ECUs and, uh, and start seeing how, how well it tunes up. Thanks uh, for taking the time this afternoon to talk to us and uh, we'll look forward to uh, catching up with you guys at SEMA in the near future as well. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.